Hello, it's Grace here on Books and Cooks. Yeah, I am starting a new vlog project and I wanted to just film the intro to it and sort of get it started. It is um, Sunday the 7th of August and this month I know in my um, August TBR video I talked a little bit about how I had a few books picked out, four different books picked out for a secret vlog project. And so this is going to be part one of two vlogs um, that will will go up that are part of this project for this month. So um, basically the way that this project works is that I have asked a couple of my good friends in um, real life who also read a lot to take a look at my own TBR shelf on Goodreads and each pick out two books that they want me to read this month. Um, and so I have, I asked my friend Sam and my friend Danielle to do this and they each were so nice and they picked out two books each for me to read. Um, and so I'm going to start by reading the books that my friend Sam picked out and sort of vlogging how it goes and my thoughts about it all. Um, but basically this was inspired by, uh, Stephanie at Stephanie Bookish and she's been doing this cool project where she does like I think it's called read it down and she every month she has a different friend pick two books from her own tbr um and then she also does some mood reading of another book off of her own tbr and the the goal is to sort of like read down her tbr and so that's something i've been working on this year and um i decided that i would just kind of do it like she did it and do it vlog style and talk about the books now when she does it she does rank um which person sort of like won in terms of recommendations that she ended up enjoying and um so i don't know that i'm gonna do that because i didn't ask either of my friends to pick something based on what they thought i would enjoy i just asked them to pick things that they wanted me to read off my tbr um but i will definitely talk about how i feel about the books obviously um, during the vlog and hopefully we'll have some fun things to share as well. Um, so the books that I have started for this first sort of round of this uh, TBR project are Siren Queen by Neva. So I'm reading that right now and I am close to 100 pages into this book um, and I'm very much enjoying it so far. It reminds me a lot of The Chosen and the Beautiful, which is the first book that I ever read by Neva, um, the only book that I've read by Neva, and um, I loved that book. And that's a great Gatsby retelling. This book is not a retelling, from my knowledge at least, um, but it is set in like a similar universe, I think, to that book in terms of the like the magic system and sort of the way that the magic works and so you know brief synopsis of this book is that um it follows an a uh, currently unnamed narrator who um is growing up in i believe los angeles in california um in this neighborhood called hungarian hill and she's the daughter of Chinese American immigrants. So her dad is actually from China and, ha and immigrated himself to the United States. And her mom is, uh, I think, second or third generation um, Chinese American whose father had worked on the railroads. And um, she, early on when she's a child, sort of like where the story starts, she gets the chance to be involved in Hollywood and be, um, you know, play little bit parts in movies when she's a kid. And she gets like totally obsessed with um, Hollywood and movies and the idea of acting. And um, it's what she wants to do, right? It's what she really wants to do. And so she does that all through high school. And now we're at a point where she's just about to turn 18 and she's trying to kind of like make a deal so that she can be in more movies um, and and eventually get bigger parts in movies. But what's interesting about this, this story and sort of like 
the way that it is that this world is set up is that there is um all different kinds of like magic going on i would say almost like fabulism a little bit i mean it is a, a magic system but it's a light magic system in the sense that um it's not it isn't very technical in these books like neva doesn't go into the details of of how the magic system particularly works it just sort of like exists and so there's not it's not probably not a great uh, magic system for someone who really wants to know like why things are the way they are or how it works um but there seems to be all these different kinds of magic that are involved with like pretty much everything including the making of movies and um there are like actual demons and then there are, it seems to be that there are maybe actual like fae people and just interesting kinds of magic at play in the story already um and so she's sort of entering this world that where she understands that she is potentially like kind of prey to these larger media moguls um, who run Hollywood and run the movie industry. Also, there's definitely some commentary on like women being preyed upon in um, the entertainment industry and sort of like women's bodies being preyed upon in different ways. It's interesting. So there's some creepiness, but it's not, it isn't like a horror scary book, but there's definitely some like bad stuff that's happening in the story so far um and she's sort of navigating like how do I make my name in this industry and how do I make the movies that I want to make and deal with the sexism and the racism and the misogyny and the like actual danger um of doing that and still you know maintain some power so pretty interesting it's also kind of told in like memoir style so um it's told from the perspective of her kind of like speaking back on her life um coming up so that's really interesting as well and I'm enjoying it a lot so far so excited to keep reading this this is like relatively short you can see I'm about 100 pages in I think it's about 250 maybe almost 300 pages so I'm hopeful that I can read this over the next couple days and, and sort of like finish it up and the other book that Sam picked out for me for my TBR is um, Sometimes I Trip on How Happy We Could Be, which is a collection of essays by Nicole Perkins. And I think I'm about five or six essays into this collection at this point, about 50 pages or so. They're relatively short essays. Um, and it's interesting so far. So Nicole Perkins, it seems like she um, grew up in the South she is um she's black and it seems like she grew up in like the 80s and the 90s so kind of like a, a millennial age um woman who grew up near nashville and so far the essays have talked a lot about um like sexuality and sort of burgeoning sexuality and and trying to um develop your sexuality while dealing with stereotypes and um you know like beliefs especially about black women and sexuality she's talked a little bit about her faith and um the episcopal african american episcopal church that she attended for many years and sort of like reckoning with faith and also struggling with faith within a traditional uh, religious context or like attending an actual church and dealing with the real people <laughs> that um, run those places and and their sort of messiness as people. Um, she's talked a little bit about uh, dealing with her parents relationship which was not the best and um, her mother being abused by her father um, you know physically assaulted and things like that and, and sort of like dealing with that and watching that. So far, it's, you know, it's pretty, it's been pretty interesting. Um, the writing is solid. I think nothing has like totally captivated me from this, the story, but it's a set of personal essays about her life. So I'm not going into that, assuming that I'm going to um, 
like vibe with all of it, right? Like anytime you read a, a collection of personal essays, they're going to be things that you sort of have in common and, and where you can understand where that person is coming from. And there will be things that are just true of them as an individual. And it's a chance to sort of hear that perspective and get an idea of what that might be like, have been like for that person. Um, so that that's definitely interesting. And I'm, you know, it's relatively short, it's about 250 pages. So I'm intrigued to keep reading it. It's been easy reading, and I'm not bored by it. It's just not blowing me out of the water. Um, you know, per se, it's not like, if we are thinking about other books of essays that I've enjoyed, um, you know, I was thinking about like, Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay or one of the collections by Samantha Irby. And there's also a recent book by um, Jenny Slate that I read. I can't remember the name of it, but all of those collections, what I liked about them is that they're pretty voicey and I like that in an essay collection. Like I like someone who really has sort of developed their voice and their perspective in a way that's interesting and kind of captivating to read. Um, and each of those people is pretty different, right? Like Samantha Irby, I always love listening to her essays, her personal essays on audio because I think she also reads them really well and she is hilarious. And so it's really fun to kind of connect with them that way. Um, Jenny Slate, you kind of get a mix of comedy and absurdity and depression and like heavy things, right? Like kind of the, the comic and absurd <laughs> and, and sadness too. And then Roxanne gave at least the collections that I've read from her um, are quite political in nature and they kind of like combine the personal with the political and there's usually an, a theme I guess that runs through her collections and so while they're serious and they are personal they're dealing with like a bigger theme that kind of connects them and I think I guess my critique of this book so far is I'm not connecting too much to the author's voice yet like I haven't really felt that connected to the author's voice and I also haven't felt um, a connection between the individual essays so far um like a an you know an overarching theme I guess so those are things I kind of look for in collections and we'll see if that comes from this but either way they're on my TBR so I'm excited to read through them talk to you soon so quick check-in today it's finally raining outside <laughs> it's been a horrible heat wave here and uh it's really nice that it's finally raining outside I'm so excited but I am two thirds of the way through this book, a little bit over two thirds of the way through Siren Queen. And this is so good. I'm loving it so much. Um, and one thing I wanted to mention today, cause I'm at a, at a point in the book where, you know, could get spoilery if I share a lot of what's going on with the plot. Um, cause it is a short book, but I wanted to mention that one of the main themes in this book that I'm really enjoying is this discussion of like, passing and passing in terms of um, race but also in terms of sexuality and I feel like that's something that was done really well in The Chosen and the Beautiful by Neva as well so this book does that also and really has a lot of commentary on it even more so I think about race um, but also definitely about sexuality and gender and kind of what it takes to make it big and if you have to compromise pieces of yourself or if it makes sense to choose to compromise pieces of yourself so that you can sort of do what you want in terms of your work and your life. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm loving this book so far. I think it's probably going to be a four or five star for me when I finish up. And yeah, that was my check-in. It's finally raining. <laughs> Oh, we've been waiting for this for so long. Yes! Yay. Hey, it's Tuesday morning and I'm just doing a quick check-in um, on my reading for the vlog. 
it's actually still the middle of the heat wave so it's earlier in the day and I'm trying to get some dishes out of the way that have stacked up <laughs> during the heat wave that I didn't want to do and that my husband didn't want to do <laughs> for a few days but I wanted to come with a, a little reading update for you quickly because I did finish Siren Queen this morning and this is such a good book I loved it so much um, I do think it's like a specific flavor so I don't think it's something that everyone's going to love and I think that this that holds true too with the, the other Neva book that I read The Chosen the Beautiful um, and this has a lot of similarities to that so I think people who didn't like The Chosen the Beautiful at all will maybe struggle with this a little bit because it is kind of a similar um, world at least like similar magic system and similar world from that book and you know similar to that book um the author doesn't really go into like intricate detail about how the world works or give you a ton of background so it's really there for you to kind of piece together from the characters conversations and the story that's being told sort of like what's going on behind the scenes in terms of magic um but yeah i loved it basically the synopsis is that this main character who um is unnamed and then she ends up being named but that that's also kind of a spoiler in the story so the main character of the story is wanting to get into hollywood and there it doesn't really place you in time but it feels like it's probably like the 30s or the 40s um within the united states in la and the reason I, I kind of gathered that is that she does talk about the transition from silent film to talking pictures. And um, that was more of like a recent transition in the story. Um, there were still people who had, had made their name in silent film and then kind of moved over to talking pictures. So um, fun vibes for anyone who enjoys like old school Hollywood, who likes the sort of the, um, I don't know the intrigue I guess of that time period and um, can can kind of sort of relate or understand what it might feel like in terms of vibes because I think this book is a lot of vibes it's a lot of um, just like description of the places and in-depth description of kind of what people were going through on set but it's also in a magic world so that's a really interesting kind of addition to the story is that there is real magic that's you know understood by people and there are many different kinds of magic it seems to be that there are different kinds of like cultural magic that people have or sort of place-based magic depending on where they lived or where their family is from and then in terms of like hollywood itself and the sort of like the media moguls and the big people running the movie houses at the time um it it's basically stated in the book that all of them have made deals with the devil essentially and like demon magic is what sort of keeps them going and makes hollywood work to a degree um in terms of like the success of different pictures and um one of the themes in the book that's discussed is the idea of people being like falling victim to that magic and that power um and also trying to protect themselves and sort of hide themselves from um feeling the wrath of that and then also people who are you know quite literally the sacrificial lamb for the workings of hollywood very you know i think not like not tongue-in-cheek like very literalizing things that we know about Hollywood if you kind of read about how it works and how people often are exploited um, in Hollywood and often have been exploited by you know specifically um, people who ran movie houses and sort of like the big money of Hollywood so there's a lot of discussion of that there's also discussion of um, exploitation based on like race and um, background and the inability of certain people who are not white or who can't pass as white to be able to get parts that are heroic in any way or that are not um, like bit parts as maids and things like that so that's one of the interesting things that 
this character goes through is she is able to make a deal with a movie house. She has some some information about someone that gives her a little bit of power. Um, and she's able to make a deal that she won't be cast in any like maid roles or um, like racially exploitive roles, basically. She denies a number of different roles, kinds of roles. And because of that, she has trouble finding kind of a place in Hollywood. And the title is actually a little bit of a giveaway about where she ends up finding her place and kind of making her her um, fame, basically, in the story. So very cool. I would highly recommend it. Um, I think this is something I would also someday like to reread, similar to Chosen and the Beautiful, because the magic system is not openly stated. So what's fun about the story is you can sort of like pick up on different clues and references and things like that throughout the book that just give an extra layer to the understanding of the world. And I think that that's really fun. Um, and then the character, the main character herself, I think is just like a really interesting character and her sort of her experience and her telling of her story is really strong. Um, and I also love a number of the side characters and there is a big component in here. I think I mentioned yesterday in my quick check-in that there's a big discussion of like passing, whether that's racial passing um, in order to, you know, claim certain fame or have certain um, success that you may be denied if people kind of knew your background. Um, and then there's also discussion of like queer passing. And so I think that that is done really well and it's sort of layered in here in a really interesting way and discussed in an interesting way. So I loved this. Um, Sam had a winner here. And I'm also about 50%, a little bit over 50% through um, Sometimes I Trip on How Happy We Could Be, which is the Nicole Perkins book of essays. Um, and that's been good. It's been solid. So I'm getting a little bit more into the swing of the essays. I still think it's not my favorite book of essays that I've read, but I definitely think it's still worthwhile to pick up things um, from different authors and hear their perspective. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. I think, you know, it's probably not going to blow me away, but I think that it's solid and I'm happy that I picked it up for my TBR. So. I'll check in when I'm done with that and we'll kind of wrap up this vlog. Alrighty, so wanted to do my final vlog check-in and wrap up for this vlog. So um, it is about 7.30ish on Tuesday night and I just finished up, sometimes we I trip on how happy we could be by Nicole Perkins. It was pretty good. I ended up liking it. One of the things that I learned by the end of the essay collection, um, really in the acknowledgement section, is that this author has also been known for having a couple podcasts. And so my one of my takeaways after reading that is that perhaps this essay collection was pitched as um, kind of an offshoot of and discussion of topics that might be discussed on the author's podcast. Um, in which case I think probably the prime audience or the people who would normally be picking it up might have some background with this author or some um, at least like prior knowledge of the kinds of things they like to talk about. And um, I think I went into this collection without really knowing anything about it or even knowing that the author had a podcast or what their background was. So in that way, I think I was surprised by what ended up being covered in this collection. Um, I would say like the back half of the essays in this collection are primarily about the author's sex life and, um, you know, specifically their involvement with different um, like kink related communities and things like that. So that's something I didn't expect the book to cover really at all. I'd say go into it maybe with like an awareness of the kinds of topics <laughs> that it's going to talk about. I think because of the title of the collection, I assumed that most of the essays would be um, like cultural critique or 
um, personal essays with like a cultural piece to them. And the essays that were like that in the collection, I really enjoyed and they were kind of what I was looking for from the collection. There's a couple great essays, one on um, Frasier, the show Frasier and the author's kind of connection to that show. Um, there's another one on Prince, um, the musician and Nicole Perkins love of like Prince's music and aesthetic and things like that. Those kinds of essays were what I looked for when I picked up the book and what I was kind of expecting from the whole collection. And I think the places where I had like the least uh, positive time in the collection were things that I wasn't really expecting to get uh, in a personal essay collection and no faults of the author. But you know, there's some essays about specifically about uh, infidelity and the author's experience as sort of like the mistress um, in relationships with men who already have partners or wives. Um, and that's something, I mean, the perspective was interesting to me because it's not something that I've really read um, firsthand from a lot of people about. So I think that it's definitely worthwhile to have that. But I also didn't really like care for it that much or think that it was great necessarily great behavior on the part of the author um and I don't think that the author was like trying to say that either in the essay um but I also think there was sort of a a perspective on it where um that kind of behavior was still okay right like they just sort of are or have decided that they're okay with that with doing that um, and I'm not at a point where I feel that way. There was another one on relationship to like the black Episcopal church and um, believing in God, but then becoming disconnected from the church later on in life because of kind of the foibles of the people who were running the church at that time and um, the way that they were doing things to take money from people in the congregation and sort of like embezzling from the church and things like that. Um, and I feel like the author kind of left that essay talking about her break with the church itself, but um, reaffirming her belief in God. And again, there's nothing wrong with people believing that, but in an essay, I guess I would love to understand more about like where that belief comes from and what underpins that for that person and sort of why they have such a strong faith and I didn't really get much of that in the essay so it sort of fell flat for me. So it was a mixed bag I would say. A mixed bag of essays that I really thought were pretty funny and interesting. Ultimately kind of a mixed bag for me. I think I gave it four stars on Goodreads because um, it was pretty well written and engaging enough and I think if the subject matter had been more up my alley in general I would have probably enjoyed it fine um, because I didn't have any issues with the writing I thought the author was pretty funny and open about her own experiences and stuff like that so not a bad time um, yeah so that wraps up my vlog with the two books that Sam picked out for me so I would say Siren Queen was definitely the win and the hit of this vlog um, and then the other book was good as well and now I have two books off my TBR for the month of August and so in the next couple weeks I'll be coming back to you with another vlog um, where I work on Danielle's two picks for me um, but in that vlog just as a little a little uh, trailer for that vlog I guess I'll be reading Dune and uh, Ice Planet Barbarians. So Dune is on the bigger side. So I do want to start that and it might be a bit of a longer vlog for that reason. So um, have a good one.